Outstanding. We will call this meeting to order at 630. As I'm sure you're aware, we are all still operating under Governor Newsom's Executive Order N2520, administered March 12th, and Executive Order 92920 on March 17th, which allows us to conduct meetings uh, via teleconference without having to um, allow members of the public in person. So people can join us via Zoom. Anyone wishing to view this meeting may do so um, on the website listed on the agenda. The meeting is being recorded and will be made available as a public record. Those people wishing to make comments in person are here. And of course, they're wearing a face covering and adhering to social distancing guidelines. Um, others make, making public comments via Zoom have responded to us in advance and we have that uh, prepared and ready to go. At this meeting and future meetings, we will be enforcing the board policy which limits comments to five minutes per person. And um, you know, in the spirit of being efficient with these meetings, we will be timing and stopping comments after five minutes. And roll call. Um, it appears that all board members are present with the exception of the student trustee. Is she present via Zoom? No? no. Okay, very good. And we will move on to item eight, Pledge of Allegiance. Nine point one approval of the agenda, and I would like to ask for a motion to approve the agenda, amending item eleven point one to state presentation of the 2020 2021 adopted budget. It is mistyped. It says nineteen twenty. So may I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So I'll moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The agenda is approved. Item 10, open forum on non-agenda items. 10.1, we will begin with our public comment cards for those people who are in person. And I will invite Michael Reeves. Thank you. Good evening. Excuse me. Madam President, trustees. My name is Michael Reeves, and I wanted to address you before the election in three weeks. I do not know if I will get the opportunity to do so uh, in that position later, but in, in the position I am in today and hope to be. I want to begin by thanking the two trustees who will be leaving us. I have not been elected to a board, but I have attended countless meetings of numerous boards and councils in the Antelope Valley. And I know the pressures you are under and the responsibility you bear. Thank you both for your service to our community. Secondly, I want to congratulate the administration, the teaching staff and the classified staff in devising an implementation of the five-tier system of instruction. Wow is the best word I can think to describe your work. Now I want to bring up the challenges we face in the future, such as declining enrollment and a possible reduction of funds. I believe we can meet the challenges. I want us to consider ways to increase our funding such as promoting online instruction in addition to in-person learning. Both have their benefits and we need to capitalize on them. I believe we should consider partnerships with other districts in promoting a university type of community college system. We aren't going to 
have funding for several police academies and are funding to have numerous nursing or engineer programs. Maybe one campus can be the focus of one specialty with general ed classes still in place. In closing, thank you all for allowing me to address you. I hope I may serve you in whatever capacity in the next few weeks or after. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we'll call Casey Priest. All right, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, well, good evening. I hope you're all doing well tonight. My name is Casey Priest. And I'm speaking on behalf of both Coast Queens, including my sister, on their concerns over the spring 2021 semester. My sister has learning disabilities. She has faced immense difficulty with remote instruction, unable to fill crucial gaps in her education. Despite the best efforts and incredible efforts of professors and many staff and faculty, remote learning remains inaccessible for many students, including my sister. She requests a more accessible website format as well as more modes of instruction considered for certain class groups. With our current strategy of instruction is not adapted with these constraints in mind, seeing many students like her may continue to move forward. I appreciate your time and your willingness to listen to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we'll go to our attendees via Zoom, and I think we begin with uh, Basilio Hernandez. Hi, can y'all hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, so good evening, everyone present and watching from home. May love, health, and happiness be in all of your lives today and forever. My name is Basilio Hernandez, president of the ABC Student Club, United Artists for Social Change. I know that we are all going through challenging times, but I'm here to say that these times have brought about an awakening of minds and of people looking to take on the issues we face. We are all in this madness together, and together we can work to make ABC a better place for all our community. As a club, we bring forth truth and provoke positive change. We hope to do this by making our voices heard with the intention of establishing a better relationship and communication between students, faculty, and administrators. Today, we present a number of paths toward a more open and fair playing field for all at ABC. And so, as the UASC, we'd like to say that first, we believe the ABC Dreamer Center must be institutionalized so it can continue to help our undocumented students. Being an immigrant myself and understanding the struggle of undocumented families and individuals, I am so happy and I appreciate that Antelope Valley College has a Dreamer Center that helps undocumented students graduate. But what you may not know is that it only exists temporarily on a grant. The ABC Dreamer Center grant will run out June 30th, 2021. We urge the ABC board to do whatever is in their power, such as making it part of their annual budget to make sure it becomes a permanent and proud part of ABC. Second, as students, we demand transparency on the current status of the reorganization, which we know will shape ABC's leadership for years to come. We hope you still hear our concerns about its fairness, and we want to know what's going on through clear and regular updates for all faculty, staff, and students. Third, we demand to see concrete steps by the current administration and board to ensure that faculty and administration mirrors the student population, which is disproportionately Latinx and Black. To that end, we as students need a more user-friendly and accessible platform for the data of Antelope Valley College, which can be used by everyone at the college interested in pushing for a proportional representation of the student population. Fourth, we urge AVC to make a more concerted effort to treat racism as a public health crisis. We appreciate the efforts and funding of the college on this front, but we need more funding for equity-minded training for all students, faculty, and staff. And we need more equity-minded curriculum for students. We need to continue to develop an academic culture rooted in more inclusivity, equity, and understanding of each other's stories, backgrounds, and struggles. We at ABC can and should be a community center for the much needed healing and enlightenment of our culture and all equity issues. One step toward this is institutionalizing anti-racism at ABC. Fifth, we urge the college to more actively support and facilitate voting 
While there is useful information listed on the homepage, the college should actively facilitate more virtual voting events and informational workshops on voting matters. In summary, we demand that the AVC board makes all of its efforts to listen to our students and support all of our students to the best of their ability. We urge you to consider our demands as ways to help, as ways that you can help ensure a more fair and open playing field for all at AVC. Let us not lose sight of our goals and mission. AVC, you are an institution that is preparing the next generation for the human struggle. We are a community, we are one people. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And Dr. Aurora Berg. Good evening, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay. Um, so this is a comment in my role as a geology instructor. This is not a comment in my role as union president. So, um, on Thursday, October 15th, ABC will be participating in the Great Shakeout, which is a nationwide as well as international earthquake awareness and preparation drill. I would like to thank Terry Cleveland for his leadership in organizing this drill and finding a way to schedule it, even with the campus closure and various COVID-19 complications. He's worked closely with Betsy Sanchez, Susie Herman, Jared Simmons, and Deputy Pine to put together the drop cover and hold on portion of the drill, an evacuation portion, and a time practice um, in which the damage control and buildings and utilities personnel of the incident command staff will sweep campus using their post-earthquake protocol to check for campus safety. Given that most of us live and work within just a few miles of the San Andreas Fault, it's not a matter of if the big one will happen, but when. And because of this, timely preparation and community public safety education is key to helping our community be resilient. Um, I'm thankful that President Knudsen has actually facilitated this drill this year, um, that he's been very, very supportive of it. And so I thank him for that. I think it's a really great thing that we are doing this drill. Um, as the resident geology instructor here, I, I'm absolutely delighted that we're focusing on this issue um, and very appreciative of the hard work done by the team and the support that it's gotten um, from the rest of the administration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 11.1, .1, presentation of the 2020-2021 adopted budget. Good evening. Thank you for having me here. Can you guys all hear it? Huh? I'm sorry? Yeah, can you just speak, just speak up a little bit? It's okay. Okay. There you go. Better. Is that good? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's kind of hard to see. Um, look, thank you. This is my, I have my notes. We can follow along on ours. Okay. So, um, the topics in this presentation will be uh, budget, cash flow information, along with reporting deadlines. Um, some of this you've already heard before. I tried to freshen it up. Um, Okay, so um, the timeline, uh, the financial reporting deadlines have been extended by the chancellor's office. Um, notably, we have until October 31st to adopt a final budget. Um, the prior year recalculation for SCIF um, our, our current unrestricted revenue is about 89 million. That's for 1920. Uh, 8 million was for recalculation payments, um, not ongoing support. We uh, the revenue projection for 1819 
was showing that we were going to use 2017-18 base plus 8.13 percent. Then SCIP was implemented and we received $8 million. We don't expect this to happen again. The 2019-2020 unrestricted uh, estimated actuals. Uh, again, current revenue eight nine eighty nine million, eight million for the recap. Uh, the calculation of revenue also includes two percent TCR um, deficit for the current year revenue. Um, that's calculated using the student center formula, and the funding sources are property tax, student enrollment, the EPA, and state general entitlement. Our assumption is that it will be funded in total, not be funded, sorry, not be funded in total from these sources by 2%. We're also estimating surplus of 10 million. Uh, we wanna set aside 500,000 for categorical salaries and benefits and another 6.2 million to mitigate the state's current cash flow deferrals. If all the cash flow issues are resolved, you know, we're proposing to set aside 6.2 million uh, to fully fund the OPEB trust fund. Uh, once this is fully funded, uh, 800 to 900 annually could be used for other district needs, including the classroom. Another, another fund that's presented here is the pension, pension stabilization fund. Um, we're not proposing to invest anything at this time. Um, this is part of the BPAP 6200 that's um, here today to be approved. After the set aside, we're left with 22.2% reserved. The general fund, uh, which is the unrestricted and restricted revenue, 83% um, of the revenue uh, comes from the state. Uh, for the general fund expenditures for 2019-2020, uh, 79% is salary and benefits. This table summarizes all the fund types for estimated actuals, uh, we show 276 million in revenue and 202 million in expenses for 1920. Revenues for community colleges were significantly impacted by COVID-19 and the uh, subsequent economic shutdown. Uh, payment deferrals of one and a half billion were used as a solution instead of budget cuts. Uh, this deferral includes the student equity and achievement. So as stated before, the TCR uh, total computational revenue is based on the student-centered funding formula. Uh, SCIF has three calculations. One is an allocation based on enrollment. Two is allocation based on the numbers of students receiving a College Promise Grant, students receiving a Pell Grant, students covered by AB 540. The third calculation is a student success allocation based on outcomes that include the number of students earning associate degrees, credit certificates, the number of students transferring to four-year colleges and universities, and the number of students who complete transfer level math and English within their first year, the number of students who complete nine or more career education units, and the number of students who have attained the regional living wage. You can find all this information on the Pamphlet's website. The 1920 rates for these calculations will remain the same for FY 2021. The skip hold harmless was also extended. So districts will be entitled to receive no lower than 2017-18 TCR plus COLA through the end of 2023-24. Pension rates decrease. A joint analysis of the government's budget was issued in July by the Chancellor's Office with assistance from ACA and ACBO and the CCLC. We have listed highlights here. And um, one of the highlights is we were approved for 12.56 million of state funds for the gym renovation.
The community college system total deferral is one and a half billion. State general apportionment is one billion and our portion is 13 million. Per the schedule, we're receiving no payments from February through June. The student equity and achievement program deferral is 415 million. Uh, we received a full July payment and a small payment in August for C with no payments from September to June for a total deferral of 5.4 million. Our 2021 advanced apportionment does not show any programs being deferred. Some payments were accelerated. And to help monitor the impact of the deferrals, a cash flow tool was created that will be used, we'll be using monthly. Also, as previously discussed, we are proposing to set aside 6.2 million, which will help mitigate using a TRAN, which is a tax and revenue anticipation note. This is a schedule of the deferral repayments. This information is fluid and should be expected to change. Um, as you know, negotiations on the new economic stimulus package are stalled. And the Democrats package is 2.2 trillion and the White House has offered 1.8, which is about $4 billion apart. If we don't receive sufficient federal stimulus funds, it will be a challenge for the state to pay both regular monthly plus the deferral. We do receive the federal funding. This should release the longest duration deferrals. So the, the month of February is being deferred, but it won't be paid back until November. So if we do get federal stimulus, we estimate that to be about 56% of the general fund apportionment, which is seven and a half million. That would leave 6 million remaining. Uh, C would be about 50% at 2.7 million. Uh, the chancellor's office has told me to please note that they won't know what the impact on the deferrals will be until they receive guidance from the Department of Finance. The 2021 unrestricted fund uh, budget has revenues of 74 million, which includes a TCR reduction of 10% and flat enrollments. The reduction in revenue is due to the economic impact of COVID-19 and the potential decline of funding sources such as property tax, property taxes, stimulus funding. Expenses include step and column increases and decreases in pension rates. There's no resource allocation at this time as well. The set asides are half a million for categoricals, 100,000 for economic uncertainties. We're estimating 18% reserve. The majority of our general fund revenue comes from the state, which is 79% of the total. This includes general apportionment, which is unrestricted and our restricted categoricals, such as the student equity and achievement and EOPS. Federal includes CARES Act grants and other federal grants such as TRIO and local in includes property tax and enrollment. To date, uh, we emergency financial aid grants to students were dispersed to 11,908 students in the amount of 4.4 million out of the CARES grant funds. Our next distribution will be about 3 million. The expenditures for 2021 for the general fund is mainly salary and benefits, which is 65% and 35% for all the other categories. Um, this table summarizes all the fund types in the budget. We're assuming uh, we're budgeting 173 million in revenue, 275 million in expenses for 2021. Uh, the decrease in revenue is mostly due to Measure AD. We do not anticipate issuing bonds in 2021. Budget assumptions for revenue for 2020. 2021, 2022, and 2022 to 2023 include 
5% TCR reduction and flat enrollments. And expenses include step and column increases and a decrease in pension rates and no resource allocation. The comparison between fall of 2019 and fall of 2020 shows a decrease in headcount of 2.2K and or 15.1% and FTEs of 569 or 12.1% as of 916. We did certify COVID-19 emergency conditions allowance, which will hold FTE as to approximately 11K. This should remain in effect through FY21. Statewide fall numbers this year show that fewer students are attending California community colleges. Our current budget, is, budget issue is due mainly to COVID-19, the state shutdown and the deferrals. But last year it was reported that the community college system was experiencing a 20 year low in enrollment due to budget, state budget cuts, lack of local funding, rising fees and fewer courses. For the three year unrestricted fund projection, we're assuming 10% and 5% TCR reduction and set asides for categoricals and a reserve uh, for emergencies for of 100K, 500K for categoricals. We're also showing a structural deficit spending for three years. The fiscal crisis and management assistant team helped prevent and resolve financial challenges. Their checklist was developed to evaluate and, and introduce fiscal health and risk of insolvency in the current and two subsequent fiscal years. This list includes questions presented here on structural deficit spending. Are we avoiding it? Is it occurring? Do we have a plan to eliminate? Has it decreased? Answering no to these questions increases our insolvency risk. We are currently working on budget reduction planning over the next few months. Phase one includes reviewing expenses that are not negotiated, such as hourly workers, non-instructional materials, consultants, license fees, travel, and memberships. Phase two would include other items that need to be negotiated. At our last meeting, you guys asked a question about utility cost savings. Um, I did an analysis year to year, 1920, 18, 19 comparing. And then looked at the first two months of this year and the first two months of the year before and the year before. Um, so some of the utilities did go down and one or two of those comparisons such as gas, water, waste removal and hazardous waste. Electricity did not. Um, it increased and it's the biggest component. Uh, we've, uh, you know, the water went down because we've removed a lot of green space for construction. So water consumption is less. Um, the drivers for the increase in the electric, electricity could be record high temps and an accelerated construction uh, schedule. For example, they aren't using generators when they're welding. Um, also the computer labs still need to be cooled. The larger issue is FY21-22. As the economy recovers slowly, the state revenues will be reduced. If Californians are moving out of the state, this will also impact property tax revenues. If FTS numbers stay down, enrollment revenue will decrease. We are very dependent on state funding. If the state can't fund the shortfall and doesn't pay, pay back the deferrals in a timely manner, it will create cash flow issues. I believe in the past that it took about five years to repay deferrals. We also are uncertain about COVID-19, how it will continue to impact us. Um, as previously stated, we have been concerned about the student-centered funding formula and how it will impact funding in the future. The governor's appointed funding formula oversight council is currently working on providing recommendations for updates. There's still a lot of unknowns. The base portion is still tied to enrollment FTS. If enrollment stay down, this would cause cash flow issues after COVID-19 emergency conditions allowances are lifted. But those emergency allowance condition allowance should hold through FY21.
This line graph re uh, compares ABC reserves over the years with averages by state, county, and other community colleges similar to ABC. In 1920, we were at our highest point, but due to deficit spending in the future, we are trending down. Do you have, do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Thank you very much for the update, and we will appreciate continued updates, you know, as we get more information. So thank you so much for the work. Thank you. All right, item 12.1, report of closed section session action. Excuse me, we have no report. Item 13, the consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Action items, 14.1, approval of resolution number 20-21-5, designation of the Department of Internal Audit Services and adoption of the Internal Audit Services Charter. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.2, approval of the 2020-2021 adopted budget. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.3, approval of designation of applicant's agent resolution for State of California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. 14.4, approval of First Amendment to standard industrial commercial multi-tenant lease between 2255 East Palmdale LLC and the Antelope Valley Community College for property located at 2255 East Palmdale Boulevard, Palmdale, California, 93550. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.5, approval to dispose of surplus or obsolete supplies and equipment. So moved. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.6, approval of contract with High Desert Auction for the annual Antelope Valley College auction to be held on November 14th, 2020. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.7, approval of U.S. Department of Education Title V grants, Teacher Accelerated Preparation Program, or TAP. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.8, uh, prior to taking action on this item, we have a public comment from uh, Dr. Aurora Bird. Good evening again. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, this is a short one. Um, as president of the ABC Federation of Teachers. I would like to see some additional explanation of the $15,000 being spent um, in, with this action item, as it seems that the budget forecast is somewhat gloomy and it seems appropriate to question additional expenditures. I do know that the college has subscriptions to a variety of services that can handle closed captioning, including TechSmith, Nomia, Microsoft Stream, and CCC Zoom. And I would like to know what this expenditure provides that these other services do not. I would also like to understand which campus events or classes are captioned through this expenditure versus which are captioned using the software programs mentioned earlier. Thank you, and I appreciate the additional explanation of this expenditure. Uh, thank you. Rick, can you speak to um, at least some of that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, this agenda item is in response to a grant that is run out of College of the Canyon specifically for captioning. 
They've operated this grant for many years. We leverage it primarily for nursing courses as a podcast. So we do a video and audio capture that goes with it. The structure that COC functions in requires us to contract with them and give them a schedule of courses and material that we send them. So this is state money through COC. So the impact on our budget? No. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. 14.8, uh, may I have a motion from the board? So move. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.9, approval of STAR Student Support Services Grant Award. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.10, approval of agreement between Summit Medical Group for Antelope Valley College Student Care. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.11, approval to enter into negotiations with Wesley Health Centers, JWCH Institute for dental services for Antelope Valley College students. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.12, approval of community college education service agreement between Antelope Valley Community College and University of Phoenix through May, 2022. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.13, approval of Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, Memorandum of Understanding between the Los Angeles County Workforce Development Board and Mandated Partners of Los Angeles County's America's Job Center of California System. So move. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.14, approval to utilize Senec Master Agreement to support the installation of an additional 10 gig Senec uh, circuit providing network services to existing Senec routers from Antelope Valley College to CalREN cloud site. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 1415, approval to utilize the Foundation for California Community Colleges Campus and School Agreement with Microsoft for Microsoft products and services through September 30th, 2024. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 1416, approval to utilize the Foundation for California Community College Master Agreement with Timely Telehealth, LLC, for mental and general telemedicine care for Antelope Valley College students. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.17, approval to utilize Waxies Enterprises LLC doing business as Waxy Sanitary Supply Master Agreement through the Foundation for California Community Colleges. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.18, approval of corrected contract amount with Simplicity Corporation, which provides case management software and shared database for human resources and general counsel. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.19, approval of revised quote purchase audio visual equipment and installation by Howard Technology Solutions for the upgrade of the audio visual equipment in classrooms. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.20, approval to utilize the Foundation for California Community, Community Colleges FCCC Services Agreement with Career America LLC doing business as Ocelot through
through April 14th, 2023. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 14.21, approval to utilize the Los Angeles Community College District contract number 40366 with Golden Star Technology doing business as GST for the purchase of audiovisual equipment and services, term extension through October 29th, 2020 with measure AV funds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 14.22, approval to purchase computer software and services using the CDW-G cooperative agreement through the Foundation for California Community Colleges, CB-185-17 with Measure AV funds. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. 14.23, uh, I believe we also have a uh, public comment before we take legislative action on this item from uh, Dr. Aurora Berg. Good evening again. Can you hear me this time? Just making yes, sure. Okay. Um, again, um, I would like to uh, ask for an additional explanation of this agenda item. Um, to cut right to the chase, it seems that it, this is going to reduce some of the repetitive demands on faculty, staff, and administrators. Presumably, this is primarily employees within student services. And I was wondering who requested the use of this chatbot, like if it's faculty and staff that suggested it, um, or if not, who, how was the recommendation to purchase this service made? And it seems to me that the underlying problem looks like there's too many questions coming in for presumably student services and not enough faculty and staff to answer them. And I'm curious as to whether students have suggested that this might help the problem. Um, ne next question, will this service be able to accurately answer student questions or is it gonna be like contacting customer service at a big retailer where you spend hours trying to interact with customer service via chat and your questions are still unanswered and your issues are still unsolved. Um, with all due respect, nobody likes that very much. And I worry that this seems expensive and might also end up being sort of annoying. Um, I, I don't really know anything about this as far as like the, the chatbot service. And so I'm happy to hear some explanations. Um, and then the last question I have about this is that is, is there a justification for why it's better to purchase this service uh, versus paying for perhaps additional overload or overtime for student services, faculty and staff, who I presume would normally be answering these repetitive questions? Um, I guess my underlying concern is that this could potentially replace job duties of faculty and staff. Anyway, I don't really know anything about the chatbot stuff, so I would just appreciate the additional explanation. Thank you. Mr. Shaw, is there something you could speak to briefly for us? Yes. Thank you. Um, the chatbot service is actually a combination of chatbot and SMS capability. Um, it has an AI back end. We will do some scripting for it. It goes beyond student services, can actually service any organization on campus with a bit of setup. Um, uh, the characterization of customer service chatbot we don't anticipate it having that level of irritation. Um, uh, yeah. We've talked to a number of institutions who've used this, they've been very happy with it. Um, uh, the, the issue primarily is that students ask questions when nobody's here. And this gives us the capacity to interact with them in what appears to be, and what I've seen as a demo in a natural language exchange in multiple languages. And when it reaches a point that it doesn't have a direct answer, its response is, let me connect you with Rick tomorrow morning at eight and somebody will get, or somebody, or IT, and somebody will get back to you shortly. So it's, it's a fairly robust system. The reason for the multiple year agreement is they did some arm twisting and got us a discount, including in the implementation cost. And I notice it's um, being purchased through Measure AV funds. 
Uh, it's actually being purchased. Uh, it's being purchased through Pathways funding. Pathways. So not general fund. Right, not general fund. Pathways, Measure AV, not general fund. Correct. Okay, great. Oh, Thank you. I appreciate it. Ask, uh, thank you. I'd mm -hmm. like to ask Chris's question, too. Yeah. Um, Rick, can you elaborate just a little bit more for me the types of questions that this um, program or this, um, I don't know what, I guess it's a Chat box. service yeah. that it, it can um, answer for students? Because if it's, can it, if, well, let me hear your answer first. Well, it will, it will do a number of the very routine things. Um, what's an ed plan? How do I get to an ed plan? How, where, what is my catalog here? Where can I find these things? It has a deeper level integration opportunity um, to answer things like, where's my financial aid? And if we've integrated it effectively with Banner, not only will it tell them contact information within financial aid, but it will integrate in a secure and encrypted fashion the report from financial aid on what they received year over year. Um, so it, it's a fairly sophisticated system. So it's not just going to refer the student at a later date to you or the financial aid office, but it actually will uh, answer the most of the students' questions. Provide meaningful content, yes. Yeah. Good. All right, may I have a motion on 14.23? Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.24, approval to use the Apple Incorporated Cooperative Agreement through the Glendale Unified School District with Measure AV funds. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes, 14.25, approval of insurance program coverage proposal in statewide educational wrap-up program for campus security building with Measure AV funds. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes, 14.26, approval of change order for Sage Hall, 17-031 with Measure AV funds. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 14.27, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the security building project, Marina Landscape with Measure AV funds. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Uh, number 15, informational items. As you can see, um, trustees, there are several informational items. Are there any questions or comments concerning any of those? So we'll leave those to your perusal. And we will move to item 16, and that's our constituent reports and announcements. And as I understand it, this evening we have three constituent reports. And so we will begin with the um, Antelope Valley College Federation of Teachers and Dr. Aurora Bird. Hello again. You're probably getting tired of me this evening, you guys. Uh, hopefully, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I apologize. I've been having some uh, internet issues today in my earlier classes, so I just wanted to check. Anyway, um, we have taken note of the recent announcement that spring 2021 will remain primarily online. First of all, we appreciate the recognition that it does not yet appear possible to reopen safely, given LA County's status in tier one of the statewide reopening process. Secondly, we commend President Knudsen for making a decision prior to the posting of the spring 2021 class schedule. We feel that making this decision in a timely fashion allows faculty, staff, and students to plan ahead more effectively. Third, we recognize that President Knudsen's decision to remain primarily online is consistent with the decision of many other area colleges and universities, including the LA CCD, the CSU system, um, Glendale and San Bernardino districts, Riverside, COC, and possibly more. However, beyond President Knudsen's announcement, 
at spring 2021 will remain primarily online, there continues to be um, disorganization and lack of transparency on campus. In particular, on September 29th, with one day of notice, the ABC Board of Trustees held a special meeting. While this meeting was ostensibly to approve accreditation documents, that business was finished within the first 10 minutes or so of the 47 minute long meeting. The remainder of the meeting was spent discussion, discussing the budget situation and plans for reopening, as you guys all know since you were there. Um, there are some aspects of this meeting that we believe are contributing to the unrest on campus. Um, First of all, while it may meet the provisions of the Brown Act to have held this meeting with one day of notice, it is unwelcoming to campus stakeholders to hold a meeting with one day of notice at a time when many of us are already at work or in class or in meetings. Likewise, these important topics deserve to be discussed um, in full light of day. Um, it's not a mystery that the budget predictions are gloomy and that the COVID-19 pandemic continues. Um, and again, while this special meeting um, appears to have met the provisions of the Brown Act, we're unclear on why these discussions were not covered on either the September or October board meeting. Um, third, I've been attending board meetings for some time, and I've noticed that for many agenda items, there is no discussion and a 5-0 vote. Um, and the fact that basically the one item I can remember with significant discussion happened at a special board meeting with very few people in attendance, whether live or on YouTube, can suggest that board members are trying to keep discussion somehow under the radar and out of public view of the campus. This does not seem appropriate. It seems like lack of transparency. Um, if these discussions need to happen, which sounds like they, they did, um, then they really should happen in prime time where the entire campus community has full notice that they will occur and a reasonable amount of time to decide to attend um, or provide comments. Beyond the logistics of the meeting, um, upon reviewing the video of the meeting, uh, AVCFT leadership became very concerned about the content of the meeting. Um, the primary issue is that it appeared that the trustees and President Knudsen were eager to reopen the campus as they appeared to believe that the drop in enrollment is due to the switch to remote learning. Um, and several issues sort of stemmed from this. And I know you guys were all there, um, but maybe it didn't come out the way you intended it to. Um, one issue was that it appears that there, there was a claim made that a widespread return to campus was supported by ABC students um, and that the board was advocating on behalf of the students. However, a resolution from the ASO advocating for COVID-related safety was not discussed and it appeared that ABC's administration was referencing a statewide survey with separate data for ABC broken out that was completed in June. And that survey, upon looking at it, primarily covered the very difficult spring 2020 switch to the online environment. Importantly, the survey didn't even ask about choice of modality for spring 2021 and, uh, or anything for spring 2021 whatsoever. And Dr. nothing, yes. Dr. Bird, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're at five minutes. So if you could wrap up. Oh, I, you know what? I don't believe that there's a limit on constituent reports. Um, so my understanding is that nothing in this survey showed overwhelming student support for reopening in spring 2021. Additionally, acknowledging that the public health officer for LA County expected that all community colleges would remain remote through spring, multiple Dr. board members, yes, I am going to ask you to wrap it up because it's the board's discretion and we did announce that we were going to keep everybody to five minutes. I apologize if it was unclear that that applied to these reports, but it did. Ah, because my understanding was several weeks ago, or weeks ago, months ago, um, at a meeting when we asked if there was a uh, time limit on constituent reports, it was announced that there was not. So not that has mind. changed.
I feel, all right, so so you're so so you're telling me that's changed. I'm asking you to wrap it up. How about thirty more seconds? Okay. Um, fair enough. This meeting that you guys had was pretty much sort of a travesty. I don't think it came out the way you intended. It showed a lack of scientific understand a lack of understanding of a lot of the scientific knowledge related to COVID nineteen. Um, it came out wrong in terms of looking. Um, somewhat insulting to students by sort of implying that we don't know what students do on weekends and at night, and that's a quote from the meeting. I don't think it came out the way you intended. In closing, while we appreciate um, and commend President Knudsen for having a change of opinion regarding spring 2021 and choosing to make and release a decision in a timely fashion, we believe that the board can do better to demonstrate transparency and effective leadership. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go on to 16-3, Amla Valley College Federation of Classified Employees, and that's Pamela Ford. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I wanted to say the classified are appreciative of the President and trustees decision to continue remote learning for our students through the spring semester. This decision demonstrates a measure of concern for students, faculty, and staff. This is clearly a shift in the right direction. Um, I was wondering, when will the salaries be published for the individuals who were promoted through the reorganization? if that could, information could be provided. And also, when will the classified positions that were approved through the reorganization that were new be sent to the union, to the classified union? Um, I'm also gonna ask as a comment that you made this evening, uh, board president, that you please provide the board policy, the limits, limits constituent report, because I've been, going to board meetings for several years, and I've never seen that before, ever. And um, lastly, I'm still looking for progress on what is being uh, done to support Omar, and has that situation been resolved? We still haven't heard anything. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And we'll move on to 16.5, the Associated Student Organization, Cameron Zepeda. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, we cannot hear you very well. Can you hear me now? Better. Uh, my headphones. I'm sorry about that. Uh, forgive me if I speak. Well, can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. All right. Forgive me. Uh, as I was also caught uh, unawares of the five-minute timer, so I will probably end up speaking quickly. I'm so sorry, Interpreter Elias. We'll listen um, fast. Thank you. I wanted to start off with a couple things that ASO has been doing. Um, we are working in collaboration with the Inner Club Council to create a Halloween event or a couple events to help promote uh, campus and uh, interconnectivity. Um, I also wanted to speak on the candidate form for the two open board of trustee positions that are being voted on. It was a very amazing event. The video, as far as I'm aware, has been closed captioned and will be released on YouTube if it hasn't been already. Um, I wanted to thank all of our candidates for coming and everyone helped set up that event. Um, and that event also helped us reach uh, some of the goals and compliances coming from AB 963, uh, which pushes the college to help encourage student voting. Um, I also wanted to address the fact that we no longer have a student trustee. Um, we are working very hard on getting that position filled. And uh, by every conversation I've had with our advisor, that position should be filled by the November board meeting if everything goes to plan. Um, I also kind of wanted to echo a public comment said earlier that um, I feel is very important as it affects my personal experience on how I've uh, experienced school since this pandemic started. Um, and that is our students with special needs and uh, learning disabilities, where I believe it is very important now that we do know that we will be online in spring, that we 
really look at how we are supporting these students. Because um, I know as a student with ADHD, I find it incredibly hard to focus in class. Um, but I also work very hard to actually focus and do everything. And I'm lucky that I have the capability to do so. Um, but it's not like that for some of our students. Um, and we need to figure out how we are addressing that situation. And if students even realize that that may be an OSD problem. Um, with that, I wanted to thank the board and those two members who will be leaving us with the upcoming election. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, there is no need to um, return to closed session. The date of our next meeting is November 9th, 2020, and this meeting is now adjourned. Oh, I didn't do board comments, did I? I apologize, let me back up. My goodness, what was I thinking? I skipped right to the end. Let's go back to uh, Superintendent President, who I also skipped. <laughs> no report. Thank you. <laughs> Board members, Mr. Stahl? Nothing. Nothing? Ms. Gaines? Um, I just wanted to uh, thank you for the uh, financial report this evening. Um, good to see that we'll probably make it through all the deferrals. So thank you for, for that update. Okay. I'd like to clarify with legal counsel, we've inferred that he may or may not have violated the Brown Act with that special board meeting. Did we violate the Brown Act by holding that special board meeting? Thank you. And I also thought it was inferred that the reason why the board doesn't have general discussion on a lot of topics is that we're meeting behind the public privately to have those discussions. And I would like to make it clear that in all the years I've been on the board, I have never violated the Brown Act in any way, shape, or form, nor do I believe any of the other board members have either. Okay, uh -huh. very quickly, I wanted to just cover the 5 votes. If somebody would please show me on any of the agendas lately where you want us not to vote 5-0. It's pretty basic, simple stuff, and there is nothing particularly controversial on these agendas at, at, at the moment. I also want to talk about the um, situation. I, I, I think we get one image from Aurora talking about safety and all that, and I get that, and we want to be safe. The board takes that very seriously. But I've also had six calls from instructors on this campus who are saying, can, can't we return or can't we get blended classes back? Because they basically are saying the online, virtual, whatever we want to call it, is not working for a lot of their students. And so we are concerned about those students. We're concerned that the enrollment has dropped. Yes, it's dropped statewide, but we have to be diligent. And at the first opportunity, I hope we can go to blended classes because it's that important. I talk to a lot of students, believe me, they're not too excited about virtual or online or whatever we want to call it. So anyway, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Cook, can you also clarify that the agenda that was posted for the special meeting contained more than the two legislative items? Can you? Uh, that it, that was properly posted, that it was a discussion about uh, uh, a work study on the budget? Thank you. Um, and can you also confirm that board policy concerning all reports during the board meeting uh, gives the board discretion to limit time, including constituent reports?
So historically, though, it's been done that way. Policy actually allows us to limit that time as well. No, nope, that's quite all right. I just appreciate you clarifying that policy. All right, I don't have anything else. Um, and now, I'll try again. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.